Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go Good morning, everybody. And hell, happy December. Yeah, year's almost over. Man, it has flown by. Uh, I've been doing YouTube like a little over a year now. Because uh, my channel just got monetized uh, like late, no, or late January of this year. I had to work my butt off to get monetized on here. It takes a while. Oh, this shit's banging. I had somebody recommend a different coffee. I tell you what, yesterday I didn't have one of these. Uh, I had to go to the barber. So I had to leave my house like extra early to get an early morning appointment to get my hair cut before work. And uh, there's like a little barista type thing next door. And I tell you what. I went over and got a latte, a large, and it was smaller than what I get at Starbucks, and it had about 20 times the amount of caffeine in it, because I was jacked the hell up half of the day, but anyway, don't forget guys, I got a birthday December 9th, damn, that's in like a week, let's see, hold on, crap, means I'm gonna have to work on my birthday. Just ruined my whole day. I was having a good day till I just figured that out. <clears throat> Damn. But anyway, guys, Cone Area is king. Oh, hear me out. Hear me out. There are situations where a vehicle could have less Cone Area and be louder than one with more. It happens. Uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that play into that, like the cabin area of the car. Uh, the type of subwoofers, the X Max, uh, how well the enclosure is built, how good that enclosure matches up with the subwoofers that are in it. But I'm going to say in every situation where the playing field is equal on the same amount of power, cone area is king. Now, let's take my Jeep for example. <clears throat> I put more cone area in it than it used to have, and it's probably not as loud on the meter, but I had a peak because the enclosure was totally different, and it was a bigger ratio, so it gave me two peaks, you know, like two camel humps. Um, I had a low peak and a high peak, and my high peak was 59 hertz, so we were doing mid-64s at 59 hertz uh, with 415s. Now at six, I haven't burped it on all four amps, but it's doing high 62s. I could have turned it up a notch, got a 63 out of it, but that wasn't even what I was trying to do that day. Um, but my peak is 35 hertz now. It is low, low. So when it comes to wind, Conary is king because it's way windier. It's pretty much louder on demo style you know demo music or giving demos but there's a couple of scenarios there like uh there's a guy named ryan max he's got a little car and he's got like uh 16 tens in it and that thing is stupid loud cone area i'm gonna say the two baddest guys on the planet for giving demos uh would have to be diego hernan i think his last name's hernandez but Diego and Joe Sparky Dom. And what do they both have in common? Cone area. They're not even running a crap ton of power. They just have a crap ton of cone area. I'm pretty sure Joe's got 15 15s in that Suburban. And then uh, Diego's got 12 18s. So both of them have a lot of cone area. I think Diego's running four 12Ks. When I got a demo from it one time, he only had three in it. It was just stupid. We're talking a stupid amount of wind. Uh, and, and I give them guys props because, you know, they're not out here with extreme dashes and, 
you know, boat and plexiglass behind the windshield and all that crap. They got, you know, just straight up demo monsters that half ass stock cabin in front of the B pillar, which I really admire that. I like it. And they're proving that you can do it and get it done. I've been in a lot of vehicles that have like, you know, there's no dash. It's all just like wood and steel that aren't nearly as nasty on lows as them two vehicles. And, you know, they'll have like the thick plexiglass up here for the windshield and stuff. And it's like Diego and Joel, they, they don't have none of that. And they're way windier than you are. But at the end of the day, it comes down to they're doing things right. You know, uh, one, they're playing low lows. Like they're playing lows and, and the windshields are holding in because they're playing lows. Uh, neither one of them guys care about a meter, you know? So they're, they're definitely doing stuff right. You, you can keep the windshield in there a lot longer by playing lows. Uh, and they're, they're having fun guys. I mean, every time I see videos of them two builds, they've got the most reacts, likes and, and everything. And they're, they're having fun with it. I mean, it's destroying the vehicles, obviously, but uh, that just kind of goes to prove cone area is king. Now, I know somebody's out there like, oh, I got two 10s now that hit harder than my homies 212s. And there again, it's going to count on subwoofer type. You know, X Max is going to play a big part into that. How well the enclosure that the subs are in match the, the subwoofer specs, you know. Uh, vehicle type, cabin type. There's just so many different variables that play into it. Uh, but I'd say at the end of the day, if you took like the same sub, let's say you were talking about Sundown X's, you know. Let's just say that you took like 110 in a perfect enclosure, tested it in a certain vehicle on the same amplifier, and then took an X12 and put it in that same exact vehicle and it's also an optimal enclosure the 12 is going to be louder i have guys hit me up all the time and they're like you know should i do three 12s or two 15s or no i had one guy hit me up about two 12s two 15s or four 12s and obviously the answer is going to be four 12s now here's where things get a little weird yes culinary is king but at the end of the day I wanted to do 12 12s in my Jeep. I just couldn't figure out a good way to fit them in there in a sixth order. Um, but that would have been a lot more cone area than the 615s. And it would have been more motor force. Big factors, you know, big factors that play in. But there's a big factor of cost too, because it only costs like $20 more for a 15 than it does a 12. And that's from most sub companies. Uh, Cause you know, at the end of the day, the motor is what really cost. So when you jump up and number of subs, you're paying more, but you can get more cone area without having to do that. If you stop and think about it, because you say, you know, you're thinking about buying two 12s. Well, an 18 has almost as much cone area as two 12s, if not more. It's only got one motor though, but you definitely can save a lot of money getting 118 over to 212s. And the only thing you're really sacrificing is motor force. And a lot of times motor force does come into play, but when you combine all the extra motor force with the extra cone area, things that's when things really change. But at the end of the day, Cone area is cone area. Cone area is king usually. But there is that whole motor force coming into the equation thing. You know, because let's say if you're going to equal out cone area, I, I don't know. I don't have my app pulled up my phone to figure out cone area. But let's just say you take four 18s and that's going to be X amount of cone area. Let's say you take eight 12s. And the eight twelves are going to be like pretty close to or a hair less cone area 
than the 418s. They might be louder if, you know, everything's in an optimal situation in the same vehicle because of the added motor force. Look at what I did there, guys. I just like said culinary is king and found a way to almost prove it wrong. But in most situations, culinary is going to be king unless we get into adding, you know, the extra motor force. Is this the end of the day? Culinary will be king. And there, there are going to be variables because if you're getting the same cone area or a hair less cone area with more drivers, you've added more motor force into the equation, which almost certainly is going to be more than an equalizer in that, you know, and the more motor force would almost win. There's something we need to test. By the way, I'm eating some of you guys, not me. Because I don't have the, the stuff to test it. And this is why I want replies. Somebody replied out here in the comments and tell me. First off, do the calculation on uh, four 18s versus eight 12s. Do the cone area comparison. Drop that down there. And see how close they are. And even if, say, the uh, 418s would have more cone area than the 812s, what do you think? Like, guys that really know subwoofers and, you know, study this a lot, am I correct that even if the 418s had a little more cone area, in a real-world situation on same amount of power, we're not talking, like, you know, more power on one or the other, the same exact clamped power, would the 812s be louder? I think they would have less cone area, but would they be louder because of the added motor force? I think they would. I think they would. Just because motor force. But I could be wrong. You know. But anyway, these are things for you guys to think about. You know, uh, if you're, especially if you're on a budget and to get that more cone area, definitely think about 18s. And I, I would stick 18s as the line to go and size the subwoofer because, yes, there are companies making 21s. There are companies making 24, 36s even. But from most of what I've seen, there's only a few good companies doing, like, subs bigger than 18s properly. Like, a lot of them are just flops, you know. Um, it is what it is. When you get up over that 18, if you're trying to use same size motor on a 5, 12, 15, and 18, 21, which a lot of companies do, guys, you know, you're going to get that same exact motor on a 12, a 15, and an 18. And if they try to put that same size motor on a 21, at that point, you have so much moving mass just from like dust cap, cone, former, coil, you know, there's so much added weight there that the motor ain't strong enough that that could definitely happen so 18 would be a good a good place to draw the line but yeah think about it this way when you're buying the motor is the most expensive part on silver when you're buying less motors but you're still getting a bunch of cone area you're still getting a bunch of cone area but that's how i would think about it yeah that's how exactly how i would think about it I don't know, guys. I just kind of was thinking about this on the way to the gas station this morning to get my coffee. I normally go to the old Dollar General, but I needed to put gas in this black Jeep. You can see my bumps right right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's coming out of here before long. Hitting the vape on video. It's just nicotine. I don't smoke, but I be vaping a lot. Uh, but anyway, guys. I've kind of told y'all what I got going on in this black Jeep. The weather's cold as hell, but I need to get this thing rafter lined, which means I need to do a lot of sanding, which means I need to change the header panel on it. Never buy an eBay header panel for, or not eBay, Amazon. <clears throat> it's not real fiberglass. It's some kind of plastic and the sun warped the hell out of the front of it. It's terrible. Got an OEM one for it though. But 
I got a lot of work to do here. I need to get a list together of things that I still need to put in here. Um, I got to build doors and everything for this thing. But there is going to be some things I still need. I don't know what. I mean, it's got RCAs ran through it, but I don't like them. So I am going to need to put RCAs in here. Uh, I'm going to try digging through my scrap bin and see what I have, you know. By scrap, I mean spare audio stuff. I know I have RCAs to put in here, they're, but they're full tilt. Or no, I think I left them my buddy Billy's because I hated them. Either way, I'm going to get some RCAs to put through here. Um, I think I really have everything to put in here, though. For the most part. Uh, we are going to try to build an enclosure for this. Add a scrap of wood at Billy's. Um, I have pieces of wood left there not full sheets but you know partial pieces uh from when i did my wall in my jeep uh billy has some leftover pieces so i do have three 12s coming that i'm gonna put in here on two 5ks guys and in case you're wondering how i'm gonna do that i have two options to do it uh i can take one coil from each sub and put on this 5k and one coil from each sub to put over here or I can just like, you know, the sub in the middle. I can do two coil, both coils from this sub and one from the center sub to this amp and same on that side. Yeah, that's like the only two options I have because they're full bridge amps. They're not strappable, but either way, we'll make it work. And the downfall is going to be it's a two ohm amplifier. Like, like that's the lowest impedance is two ohm. And I'm definitely going to put a, uh, wire it down like they're dual four so you know you take three four divide it by three 1.33 that's gonna be the ohm load on each amp <laughs> so that's kind of like wiring an amp at 0.67 it should be all right it's just i've ran tar amps like way low because of impedance rise so it should be good i'm just babbling on at this point i need to get this jeep started the heater don't work where the crap in here blend door is kind of messed up so the heat don't really work at all which means the AC don't really work. But, yeah. Anyway, guys, I wanted to talk about cone area this morning. Not really why I chose 312s to put in here, but part of it. I could have done 215s in here, which would have been more cone area. I wanted to do something weird for you guys, something a little different. I actually put thought into it for the people that definitely subscribe to my channel and watch it. That like seeing oddball stuff. What I just explained about how I'm going to wire those amps is oddball in itself, which is why I chose three subwoofers to put in here. You know, I could have done 410s, 412s, 215s, whatever. But I specifically chose to do the three subs for weird amp wiring, you know. And I kind of dig the decision because not a lot of people do three subs. Some people do. But then again, not a lot of people do three subs and wire two amplifiers to them. So I thought that would be cool. But anyway, guys, I'm going to enjoy my coffee. If you're drinking your coffee, enjoy it. And uh, I still have stickers available. I think you guys, I mean, a lot of you guys have seen them. I did a video on them. I have one right here. Oh, Jangle Lang, if you want one, my cash app, just cash at me $5. Put your address in the cash lap or the cash app. I've had a lot of people send me a cash app and not an address. So I need the address to send a sticker to. But it is just Jerry dollar sign. Jerry ain't loud. It'll pull me up. Jerry Jaco on there. And everybody that's ordered stickers, they have definitely all gone out. A lot of y'all have already got them. I appreciate y'all. Peace out, guys. And as always, base on.